Aegon's Conquest is the upcoming Game of Thrones prequel show which is currently in development at HBO. Aegon's Conquest will chronicle the exploits of Aegon I, known as Aegon the Conqueror, as he along with his sister wives Rhaenys and Visenya, and their three dragons Balerion, Vogar and Merxis unite the Seven Kingdoms under the Targaryen banner. Let's take a look at the main character of Aegon's Conquest show, Aegon the Conqueror himself. King Aegon I Targaryen known as Aegon the Conqueror and Aegon the Dragon was the founder and the first king of the Targaryen dynasty who conquered Westeros and united the realm with the exception of Dorne, with his sister wives Visenya and Rhaenys and with their three-headed dragons Balerion, Vagar and Myrxis. Aegon was child of House Targaryen born on Dragonstone in 27 BC to Lord Arion Targaryen and Lady Valyna Valerian. He had an older sister, Visenya, and a younger sister, Rhaenys. According to Valyrian and Targaryen tradition, Aegon married within the family. However, instead of taking only one sister to wife, as had been common, he married both of them. It's believed that he married Visenya out of duty, because as his elder sister he needed to wed her to secure his succession, but he married Rhaenys out of love. Aegon had claimed the dragon Valyrian for his own prior to his marriage. Aegon was tall, broad-shouldered and powerful in appearance, with purple eyes and short-cut silver hair. He was very charismatic and commanding. During his conquest, he typically wore a shirt of black scales, greaves gauntlets and a cloak into battle and wielded black fire, a sword made of Valyrian steel. His crown was a simple circlet of Valyrian steel, set with big square-cut rubies. He was a solitary person whose only friend was Zoris Baratheon, who was his half-brother. The king was a great warrior who only rode his dragon Balerion for battle or travel and never entered tourneys. In his youth, when Pentos and Tyrosh asked Aegon for his aid in their struggle against Volantis, Aegon, Lord of Dragonstone, flew to Pentos atop of Balerion to meet the prince of Pentos and the city's magisters. Aegon next flew to Lys where he burned a Valentine fleet before it could attempt to invade the city. Shortly after, Aegon returned to Dragonstone. The Targaryens, a family of Valyrian origin, had been in control of Dragonstone for a century before the doom of Valyria destroyed their homeland in a volcanic cataclysm. For another hundred years on Dragonstone, the Targaryens slowly built up their strength and raised their dragons, the last in the world. As the century of blood came to an end, Aegon's interest in Westeros grew. He had previously visited the citadel of Old Town and the arbor in the Kingdom of the Reach with his elder sister Visenya, and he might have also visited Lannisport in the Kingdom of the Rock. He had a huge wooden table made cut in the shape of Westeros with a map of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros painted upon the surface. No borders were painted upon the painted table. However, as Aegon believed it should be one realm instead of seven. Aegon began planning the conquest of Westeros long before launching the attack, spending time incognito visiting Westeros' cities and castles and gaining intelligence on the different houses, their lords and their vessels. He was helped in the planning by his half-brother or his Baratheon, his most loyal ally and vessel, his best friend and the first hand of the king. Before Aegon the Conqueror, the Seven Kingdoms were just that, seven separated kingdoms ruled by seven different kings, but no longer. The Storm King ruling from Storm's End, Argilek Durandan, reached out to Aegon proposing a marriage between Aegon and his only daughter, Princess Argila. Aegon spurned the offer, stating he had no need of a third wife, and instead offered his close friend and half-brother or his Baratheon as Argila's husband instead, in return for all the land surrounding the Blackwater Bay, including those possessed by Argilek. Insulted, Argilek cut off the hands of Aegon's envoy and sent those back to Dragonstone, upon which Aegon called his counselors together. After six days of consulting, Aegon sent forth ravens to every lord in Westeros, declaring his claim to the throne. Aegon, with his two sister wives and their three dragons, led a scant few thousand troops in invading the entire continent of Westeros. Aegon landed with his army on the eastern coast of Westeros at the mouth of the Blackwater Rush where he constructed the wooden Aegon Fort. Aegon was crowned with a Valyrian steel circlet by Visenya and hailed as king of all Westeros by Rhaenys. He also displayed the three-headed dragon symbol of House Targaryen for the first time. 
the Targaryen siblings departed the Aegonfort, with Aegon marching northwest into the Riverlands to confront Heron Hor. Edmund Tully, Lord of Riveron, declared for Aegon and led the River Lords in revolt against the ruling Ironborn. When Heron refused to yield Harrenhal, Aegon attacked the gigantic new castle with Balerion, and House Hor was extinguished with the burning of Harrenhal. The next day, Aegon named Edmund as Lord Paramount of the Trident. Meanwhile, Rhaenys and Norris defeated the Durandans in the Last Storm, and Norris Baratheon was given Storm's End, founding House Baratheon, while Visenya fought the Arrens and secured Cracklaw Point. After regathering at Stony Sept, the Targaryen siblings advanced against the larger host of the two kings, the Gardener and Lannister kings. The Targaryen dragons Balerion, Merxis, and Vagar allowed Aegon to achieve a great victory at the Field of Fire, which resulted in the death of Myrn the Ninth Gardener, King of the Reach, and the surrender of Loren the First Lannister, King of the Rock. Aegon then marched for Highgarden, where he named Harlow Tyrell as Lord Paramount of the Mander after the castle's surrender. The Targaryens again reunited to face the host of Torrent Stark, King in the North. But Torrent chose to kneel to Aegon along the trident instead of fighting a battle, saving the North and its people. Visenya returned to the Vale where she achieved the surrender of the Arrens, while Rhaenys flew to Dorne in an unsuccessful mission to the Martells. Aegon, meanwhile, marched to Old Town, which was surrendered to him by Lord Manfred Hightower upon the advice of the High Septon. Within the Starry Sept, the High Septon declared Aegon to be King of the Andals, the Roinar and the First Men. Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. Rather than ruling from Old Town or Dragonstone, Aegon chose to make his seat King's Landing, the new settlement growing around the Aegon Fort. Aegon founded the city of King's Landing, began construction on the Red Keep, and forged the Iron Throne from the swords of his defeated enemies, melted with dragonfire from which Targaryen kings would rule Westeros. His descendants ruled for a further three centuries. Aegon fathered two sons with his sister wives. His older son Aenys was born to Rhaenys in 7 AC, and in 12 AC Visenya bore his younger son Maegor, later known as Maegor the Cruel. Aegon's first established law was the King's Peace, which forbid conflict in the realm without the leave of the Iron Throne. Aegon treated the defeated lords with respect and allowed each region to retain its own laws and customs. During Aegon's conquest, the Lords of the Three Sisters had declared their independence and crowned their queen. King Aegon commanded Lord Torrent Stark, the new Warden of the North, to end the rebellion, and he sent Queen Visenya Targaryen on Vagar to accompany the Northern army, which quickly ended the rebellion. In 2 AC, Aegon turned his attention to the Iron Islands, where the Ironborn had been fighting for two years over the kingship, leading the invasion of the Iron Islands by several war fleets. Aegon landed on the Great Wyke with Balerion to deal with the contenders. Aegon personally cut down Corin Woolmark with Blackfire, while the priest King Lotos walked into the sea, drowning himself. The other contenders quickly bent the knee. Aegon ignored the suggestions of making the Ironborn vessels to the Tullys of Riveron or the Lannisters of Casterly Rock, as well as the suggestion to exterminate the Ironborn by Dragonflame. Instead, Aegon allowed the Ironborn to name their own Lord Paramount, for which the Ironborn chose Vicon Greyjoy of House Greyjoy. In 3 AC, Aegon turned his attention back on Dorne, the only kingdom remaining unconquered. He first decided to try and bring Dorne under the rule of the Iron Throne through diplomacy. After a year of negotiations and no progress to show for it, although, Aegon decided to take Dorne by force of arms. In 4 AC, Aegon launched a new invasion continuing the Wars of Conquest. Although initially the conquest of Dorne seemed to succeed, it unraveled quickly and the first Dornish war prolonged and lasted for nine years, and knew many deaths and tragedies. One of these tragedies was the capture and mutilation of Aegon's friend, half-brother and hand of the king, Lord Doris Baratheon, by the Will of Will. Following his release from two years of captivity, Oris returned home lacking a sword hand, as did the men who had been taken captive with him. Aegon, intent on revenge, released his dragons and burned the castles of the defiant Dornish lords. The greatest loss Aegon faced was the death of Queen Rhaenys Targaryen at Hellholt in 10 AC, when Merxis fell from the sky, 
with Rhaenys upon her back after a shot from a scorpion took the dragon in the eye. The two years that followed are known as the Dragon's Wrath, as Aegon's wrath after Rhaenys' death knew no bounds. Aegon and Visenya placed bounties on the heads of Dornish lords after Rhaenys' death, and in turn the Dornish put bounties on the Targaryens. Aegon was attacked three times with his guards saving his life twice. Visenya also defended her brother twice with Dark Sister, with one occasion occurring in 10 AC. This led to the forming of the elite royal bodyguard known as the Kingsguard, with Visenya personally choosing the men herself. The attempted conquest of Dorne was called to an end in 13 AC, after a visit from Princess Daria Martell, the daughter of Nymor Martell, the ruling Prince of Dorne. Daria brought the skull of Merxis and a letter with her, which was given to Aegon. After reading the letter, Aegon flew on Balerion to Dragonstone. Likely in the letter it was written that Aegon may have his sister's remains if he agrees to peace. He returned the next day, and agreed to a peace between Dorne and the Seven Kingdoms. Aegon kept good relations with Princess Daria. He visited Sunspear with his eldest son Prince Aenys in 23 AC to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the peace between the Iron Throne and Dorne. The remaining 24 years of Aegon's reign were peaceful, so much that the last two decades of his reign were later called the Dragon's Peace by the Maesters of the Citadel. The Conqueror spent much of his time consolidating his power by traveling throughout the Seven Kingdoms devoting half of every year to making these royal progresses. In 33 AC, Aegon made his final progress throughout Westeros, during which he visited Winterfell. Aegon the Conqueror ruled from 1 to 37 AC, and died in Dragonstone while telling his two eldest grandsons Aegon and Viserys the tales of his conquest at the painted table. Aegon died from a stroke at the age of 63. Aegon was cremated on Dragonstone, and his funeral pyre was set aflame by Vagar. Aegon the Conqueror Targaryen is a legendary figure, and his conquest is a legendary event, all of which will soon be shown in a Game of Thrones prequel show Aegon's Conquest. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next one.